Hey everybody, in this lesson you are going to learn about the Ceylon Traitor. This is an animal kingdom's phylum Ceylon Traitor and Ceylon Traitor is also called as Nedaria. Now the term Ceylon Traitor was given by Leucart and let's see some of its important features. So first when we talk about its habitat, we see that mostly they are found as marine animals but few of them like Hydra can be found in fresh water. Next when we talk about their body, we see that they are radially symmetrical. Okay, so you can cut them in any axis from the center and they can be divided into two equal halves. Next, they have a tissue level of organization. So a collection of cells is found, okay, and these are arranged in simple tissues. Next, we see that they are diploblastic. So with the term diploblastic, we have learned that there are two germinal layers present, the ectoderm and the endoderm. Coming to their internal body okay, or anatomy, we see that they have some cells called nidoblasts or nidocytes which are present on their tentacles. So if you look, have a look at the hydra, you can see that the tentacles are present and on these tentacles there are nidoblasts present which contain some cells which are stinging cells. So these cells which are present on the tentacles, they mainly help in anchorage so that they can grab something, they help in defense from the other harmful animals and also for capturing the prey. Next we see that their body is called as cilintron, okay? And this cilintron, it is a place where digestion take place, okay? And also we see that digestion, it is both intracellular as well as extracellular. So if we see the digestion which is intra and extra both, it means that some of the digestion is taking place inside the cilintron and some is taking place in the vacuoles of the gastrodermal cells. So because of this, we call this cavity or the body cavity as gastrovascular cavity because its function is to partly digest the food and also to distribute in the body. So that is why we also call it gastrovascular cavity cavity. Okay. Next is the respiration and excretion. Now the respiration and excretion, it takes place by simple diffusion with the help of body surface and the excretory matter of the cylindrates is ammonia. It is ammonia of course because they are present in lot of water. Next when we talk about their nervous system. The nervous system we see it is kind of diffused and here the non-polar type of neurons are present meaning that they are not properly divided into cytons and dendrons etc. So this was some of the characteristics of sealant traits. Moving forward let's have a look at their reproduction. So in reproduction we see that these sealant traits are found in two forms. The first one is what we call polyp and the second is medusa. Now when we talk about the differences between these two, we see that polyp, these are usually cylindrical in shape like hydra, adamsia, etc. Similarly, when we talk about medusa, we see that they are umbrella shaped like aurelia or jellyfish. Next we see that they are polyps, they are mostly sessile but some of them, they are motile. Okay, So mostly they are sessile means that they are stick to one place. Second, when we talk about medusa, we see that they are usually free swimming, okay. Next, coming back to polyp, they may be solitary or they may be colonial. But the medusae, they are always solitary. The mouth of polyp and tentacles are directed upward, okay. So, it's like, you know, if you open an umbrella towards the upside, this is the type which how the polyp appears. But when you talk about medusae, you see that the mouth and tentacles, they are directed downwards. So the structure is more or less similar, but it appears like opening an umbrella upward or downward. So now, when, are we, when we were saying that these are the two forms of reproduction, we can see that polyp, it is the asexual form, whereas medusa, it is the sexual form. Now, in all the organisms, either one or both zooids may occur in a species and if both are found in a species, two alternate forms of life cycle can be seen, okay. So this is what we call alternation of generation, alright. How do we say that? Let's see. So we say that polyps produce medusae asexually 
and medusae forms polyp sexually that is what we call alteration of generation or we can name it metagenesis for example it happens in obelia so now moving forward let's have a look what is alternation of generation how does it happen and how why do we call it metagenesis so we have learned that the polyp is sessile and the body is hydra like that is it is has a cylindrical stalk with mouth and tentacles facing upward whereas the medusa it is a free floating or free swimming structure just like the jellyfish it's like a bell or an umbrella with mouth and tentacles facing downwards so now when we talk about alternation of generation we can take an example of obelia here we see that during sexual reproduction medusae liberate gametes into water okay so we can see male and female gametes released all right now uh, following fertilization the zygote forms a ciliated larva which we call as planula all right so this larva is formed by a number of divisions so you can see there are stages such as two cell stage four cell stage and then formation of blastula which leads to the formation of planula larva now this planula larva it can swim and now it settle down and grows into a sessile polyp all right now next we see that the polyps they reproduce asexually by budding whereas the medusa liberates gamete into water during sexual reproduction and both asexual and sexual forms are diploid and the haploid cells are gamete so in simple terms we can quickly revise and see that medula it forms two gametes male and female after fertilization they give rise to the planula larva planula larva when it settle down it forms young polyp when young polyp it reproduces asexually let's say by budding this forms medusa so the formation of medusa by polyp is asexual but the formation of polyp by the medusa it is sexual so this was about the reproductive stages in sea lanterns moving forward let's have a look at the different classes present in sea lanterns sea lanterns is classified into three classes the first is called as hydrozoa second is scyphozoa and the third is anthozoa or actinozoa when we are talking about these three let's see some of the differences so firstly we see in hydrozoa polyp and medusa both are equally dominant except for hydra okay coming to scyphozoa we see that medusa form is dominant whereas polyp it is reduced or sometimes absent in anthozoa only polyp form is dominant whereas in this type medusa is reduced or absent so these three they are different only in hydrozoa both can be seen right in scyphozoa medusa is dominant whereas in anthozoa polyp form is dominant next when we talk about the gametes we see that in hydrozoa the gametes are ectodermal in origin whereas in scyphozoa gametes are endodermal in origin Finally coming to anthozoa we see here also the gametes are endodermal in origin coming third point we see that mostly the hydrozoa they often show polymorphism and metagenesis it is of course because it has both type of forms the polyp as well as medusa when we look at some of the examples we see that hydrozoa some of the examples are hydra obelia physelia etc most important point is that obelia it is also called as sea fur physelia it is also called as the portuguese man of war it is called so because it is neurotoxic or it has some gas glands present coming to the examples of scyphozoa we see that aurelia which is also called the jellyfish next is rhizostoma which is called many mouth or polystoma next anthozoa so it has two types of animals all right the first here we see the sea anemones so the sea anemones in their skeleton is absent and the second are corals so in corals we see that they have a skeleton made up of calcium carbonate now under sea anemone we see it is 
metridium, adamsia, etc. Under corals, we see it is meandrina, which is also called brain coral, panatula, which is also called sea pen, then gorgonia, called as sea fan, asteria, the star coral, the alcyonium. Alcyonia, it is also called dead man's finger. Corellium, it is called red coral. So, the red coral, the precious gem, it is nothing but a type of seal and traitor. Next is Heliophora, which is a blue coral. Oculina, the eye coral. These are some of the examples of the different classes of seal and traitor. Moving forward, let's have a look at some of the common examples of seal and traitor and their figures. So, here, firstly, we see the structure of Hydra. Then, Asteria, Aurelia, Penitula and lastly Obelia's colony.